What's good YouTube? Travis to here and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do some analyst stuff for Team Liquid versus Energy. Now as you guys can see on the team, on the screen, this is something a little bit different because this is focused around League of Legends Championship Series, also known as LCS. So North America is entering its playoffs and if you guys didn't know, I am a very avid League of Legends player myself and I kind of want to put in some stuff League of Legends related into my channel. So I figured what better time than to put into work the experience that I have. Now before I start off this video, I do want to put out a reminder that all these thoughts are my opinion. They are not fat. So if you have any disagreements, be sure to leave them in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to listen and talk. You guys can also put what you guys think at the end of it. I'm going to go through the pros and cons of both teams. And then I'm going to just talk about what I think is going to happen. And just give a quick prediction on what I think is going to go down. So with this being said, this is Team Liquid versus Energy. And... Oh, I guess it probably would be a good idea for you guys to actually know my background with League of Legends. I completely blanked on that because you guys don't know. Um, for you guys who don't know, I originally started up in League of Legends known as Birdman. Uh, I went, uh, I shoutcasted tournaments for a league organization called GG Tournaments. And I learned a lot from them and I became very knowledgeable over the game. After that, I shortly became an analyst for a esports organization, and I went from analyst to coach of that organization. And basically, long story short, that's all the experience I really do have. I just feel like I'm very smart about the game, and yeah, and I haven't really had too many disagreements. Well, you always have disagreements whenever it comes down to League of Legends and how to play the game, but uh, it's one of those things where I know I'm really good at this, so it's one of those things I really enjoy doing, so yeah. So without further ado, we're going to talk about the Team Liquid versus Energy game because everybody is talking about TSM and C9, so I want to, you know, go ahead and start it off with Team Liquid and Energy because I'm actually a pretty big fan of this because Team Liquid, I thought was going to be, like, fighting for, like, 7th place. But instead, you know, they keep the meme alive and they go in the 4th place with a 10-win, 8-loss record. Energy, which was a team that was expected to be, like, a top 4 team, actually went nine and nine now based off a score line you would think this match is going to be a lot closer than what it thinks but i'm actually thinking quite different see energy actually struggles against the top teams while playing really good against the teams all the teams that got relegated uh they are fifth place so it's very interesting to me to look at energy just because of the fact that the teams that they beat in the playoff spot was tsm so it's one of those situations where it's like energy, I mean, they have TSM's number, but do they really have the number of all the other teams? This is a best of five, so there's a lot of questions to be answered. But we're going to talk about, first and foremost, what the pros and cons of Team Liquid are. So the pros and cons of Team Liquid. The pros on them are they can be super aggressive. Uh, the Known fact for this is the fact that Dardot can go absolutely off, Phoenix can go off, Piglet can go off. Uh, all three of these players have the potential to go off and just completely snowball a game out of control. Uh, all three can be very aggressive. Phoenix with more passive of the three. Uh, he kind of focuses more on just controlling his mid lane, but Dardoch especially is known to be a very aggressive player And that's actually going to be probably one of the most key things inside of this match uh, How aggressive does Dardoch play and how big is the payoff? If you guys don't know if you play an aggressive play style the playoff uh, Not the playoff the uh, payoff of what you get out of that aggressive play is probably the biggest thing because there's always a pro and a con to an aggressive play sometimes you lose nothing actually there's usually like no there can be no repercussion but a lot of times if a in the lcs there is a repercussion of some sort uh especially when you're talking about the top six teams there should be some sort of repercussion so it'll be interesting to see what they balance out with uh if he can take aggressive plays that would be really big, and that will lead into Team Liquid being able to snowball the game. Taking off, Loco Doco gets so much flack for his lisp, it's annoying, but this guy has really great experience as a coach. This is a man who has been the world. He has won an international event as a coach. He has ha actually has had the sp uh, Spring Split Championship in his team's hands when he was coaching for TSM, and 
He has also won a coach of the uh, coach of the split award for the fact that he is a great coach. So I think he's actually one of the more underrated, which is weird because you just heard all the things that I just named off. I mean, I am Catarwis. He freaking an international event was won by NA. Like this was a huge talking point for NA. Like he was behind a big movement of people saying NA can compete at an international level. That was before we got zero and ten at Worlds, but it's one of those things where Loco Doku actually brings a lot to the table, and I think if anything, he's proved himself by taking on the challenge of Team Liquid and fielding a roster of not just one rookie, not just two rookie, but three rookies. These are three rookies that have literally not that much competitive play. Like they, all three of them, do. This is their first year on the LCS stage. Freaking Matt is a player that I thought was going to do terrible. Uh, Dardock is is a crazy aggressive challenger player, which I expected him to do all right, but I didn't expect him to do what he has done in making himself one of the best NA junglers currently, and we'll follow back to that later. And then Lolo, he's been hit and miss, honestly. Uh, but, I mean, they put him in a tank row, and he plays it, and he does his job, so... In that retrospect, that's all you really want out of your top laner. It's just do your job. And that's it. That's all you need. Piglet is playing better than ever. This is actually Piglet, uh, Piglet mm, from Season 3, I feel like. Just because like it went from Season 3 to what, Season 4, Season 5. And, uh, and it's just like... He hasn't really left a mark. Like, he's always been like good. It's just... For a while, it just seemed like he wasn't progressing. Like, it felt like he wasn't playing well at all. Like, he was nowhere near as good as what he is. And he's playing back to form. Like, it's weird to see a player go back to playing as well as Piglet has started playing. And, I mean, I you could even probably say Piglet might play better than what he did with SKT. But I don't actually want to make that claim because they... Piglet has not played on an international stage, and I feel like that claim cannot be made. However, I do believe that this is the best he's ever played in NA, and I, I'm actually really excited. I want him to actually get some international comp with him on Team Liquid, uh, just because I want to see how he actually is stacking up towards all the other AD carry, all the other bot lanes and worlds. But, I mean, that's just that. He, he has to get onto an international stage, and they got to get out of Forever 4th. Dardock is leaving his mark as one of the best NA junglers. He's It's interesting because there's three really good junglers that you can name off the top of your head. And you can go Rain Over, uh, you can just shoot off Rain Over, Rush, and Dardock. Those are literally the three best junglers right now. And I feel like it's super interesting because these are three of the top teams right there right off the get-go i mean he is our probably our best na jungler well not our best but he's like one of the best like we still have a bunch of other players around um it's smithy is actually really good so i mean and i mean there's even other junglers out there that aren't playing that badly but dardock is just like he puts out some really crazy mechanics, and his aggressive play style plays out well with that. So the fact that he has a good backing from Team Liquid means that he's been playing very well, and his aggressive play style has been able to translate very well into big snowballs that they're able to close out with. And then, of course, Phoenix is just playing very consistently. I really don't have anything good or bad to say about Phoenix. Uh, I think he everybody either says one or two things where they say he's either overrated or he's just super good. And I actually agree with the latter on that one. I think that he is really good. And because of that, he's playing at a very high, consistent level. And honestly, I don't really think that's a bad thing <laughs> he's playing at a very high consistent level and he's just not dropping the ball for his team i don't think we i've seen many games where i've just been like wow phoenix has dropped it like when he first joined team liquid i said that a lot and now as time has progressed we've seen that phoenix that people talked about in scrims back in the day show up on stage and it's just like he is this building block for team liquid which they're able to play around and they're able to 
utilized correctly. So I definitely think Phoenix is playing really well. Uh, with that being said, there are some cons. They have three rookies. The reason why I put this as a con is because experience is a thing. Once you play in stage, once you play best of fives, that is completely different than playing in the LCS stage. There's a whole nother level of pressure. So whether they crumble to that pressure or not, whether they get too hypey, whether they can control themselves will be a factor on if Team Liquid can come out ahead. Matt has a ch smaller champion pool. He has played a decent variety of support champions. I mean, you don't really have to have a humongous champion pool in support to play well. However, he has not impressed anybody when he plays melee supports. Like, Bra his Braum and Alistair, I think he's like 2-6 and six on. And even though I think Alistair is his most played support in the LCS, he's like 1-5 and five on it or something like that. Like, he just has not showed up on Alistair at all. And I feel like ranged spellcasting supports like Bard, which he's been extremely impressive on, and Janna, which he has been impressive on as well, are probably his best suits. And he could easily be targeted for that fact. Uh, you could ban him out and force him onto one of these melee supports. Uh, I don't see that happening because you do have threats in Dardoch. Uh, and you don't want to give Phoenix like something like Azir, which is rising in popularity. Uh, and, like, you don't want to give away an OP. Like, there could be an OP that they could see or they could want to get rid of that they can ban out, and they have that option. But he that is an option for energy if they decide they want to. Matt does not have a good performance on melee support. Lolo does not put up good stats in laning. Now, there's a counterpart to this. There's a counter argument. He plays tanks, like, nothing but tanks. That's what they put him on. And his laning suffers pretty hard because of that. But I still look at it as his stats and lane are like near the very bottom. Like all of his laning stats are really poor. But he does show up in team fights. So I feel like if they can just exploit his bad laning and translate that into energy being able to snowball. Especially since he's going against impact who has the ability to play very well. Uh it could be really disastrous for team liquid uh just because impact with the wheels going or is a pretty scary thing especially if they were to put him on something like a gangplank or something like that uh, even though i do feel like gangplank and champions like fior are currently falling out of the meta a little bit more so i mean they're still really good don't get me wrong but i feel like they're start they're slowly like falling to like the very bottom like if you were to make a top 10, they would be towards the bottom end no matter what, I feel like. So that's my opinion on that one. But the biggest thing for me is the team comms actually still seems sloppy in the mid to late game. I don't know what Loco is actually doing to change this. And I don't know what's going on with us. But it seems like if Team Liquid are to lose a game, it's in the late to mid translation. Because they will make a huge game throwing mistake like it shows their experience and the shot calling and everything so it's one of those things where team liquid definitely needs to show that's improved to give themselves a little bit more consistent late game and make sure they're able to close because you don't really want to rely on the fact of you getting a uh the snowball early uh because that's a very unreliable strategy at times. Like, you can have very close games, and you don't want to be put in a situation where you're in a close game and you, you're not able to close as efficiently as the other team. So I think a little bit better mid to late will basically guarantee them a victory, but it's still, like, it, it, it feels sloppy still, and I feel like they can definitely improve on that. But without further ado, we've gone through the pros and cons of Team Liquid, so we're going to actually roll over to Energy. With Energy, we actually have a good bit of pros and cons. For the fact of GBM is always known for having a deep champion pool this split. I say this split because he does not. All, he was not always known for that. He was known as a Oriana one trick at one point. Uh, which is Oriana has been is a really good champion for him, but in NALCS I think he is, has played thirteen different champions if I remember correctly. Uh, he's also just mechanically super good, so he's able to bring out a large champion pool 
and the fact that that means that he might not have shown everything like we've had two weeks since we seen last seen gbm he probably has some po uh, picks in his pocket and that's a scary sight because the last time they pulled a pick out of their pocket that nobody was expecting uh tsm got like 18 to zero like they lost 18 to zero they got shut out like that's such a weird thing to still say to this day when they brought out mid zillion so in a best of five it'll be interesting to see how that deep champion pool comes into play now they're they have actually really good mid to late calls uh that allow for wins from behind they actually tend to win a lot of their games uh clawing back into the game it feels like and they've won a lot of games like their latest game against tsm they actually had to climb back into the match so i can definitely see uh their good mid to late calls allowing them to actually pick up a win especially against team liquid if team liquid wasn't to get aggressive they make a mistake in the late it feels like energy would actually follow up on it with gbm actually being able to do a lot and Quan Quan just playing really well and with speaking of Quan Quan. Quan is actually playing very well, and I actually think he's actually one of the most underrated supports in LCS currently. The reason why I say that he's underrated at the moment is because nobody really talks about his play, and they talk about the, some of the mistakes that he makes, but he is one of the best supports in the league, in my opinion. I feel like he's kind of leading the way. Quan Quan is up there in categories where I would put uh, Adrian... I would put uh, Bunny Fufu's mechanical skill. Uh, High has actually been performing well past anybody's expectations. My cat even agrees with me. He's like, Quan Quan, yeah, meow. But it, it's he's underrated for the, what his role is in the team, and I think he actually is utilized fairly well. And I think he's actually one of the better performing players uh, right beside GBM. But with that being said, Impact can also play really well. I say can because this leads into the con where Impact has, however, not had a good split so far. He has done some really reckless things. He hasn't played to the same form that he's known for. Uh, this doesn't feel like the Impact straight from Team Impulse. This feels like the Impact that we kind of... I, I It's kind of weird because I'm comparing Impact to his former teammate Piglet where Piglet just did not seem that good when he joined a new team. It feels the same thing for Impact. Like It feels like there's communication errors that Impact just keeps making. And he is good. It's an unknown fact he is a good player. But he's not playing good this split. And that's what matters at the moment. Everybody's always going to remember what, you, what your last game was. And Impact he's gonna forever have that clip where he dived two towers into a team that had a soraka with no backup hell no i just i just think impact if he picks his game up and plays well lolo is something that he can exploit and it's two similar styles where impact does play tanks but impact also could play something a little bit more offensive if they need so that will be an interesting matchup automatically just because that is a pro and a con for energy. Also, Altec is inconsistent. I sometimes actually forget that he's in the game. Um, it feels like he's just a 4v5 and then all of a sudden Altec dies. I'm just like, what? How did... What happened there? It's, it's weird because he just kind of farms up and just gets really big. And he either is super impactful or just not completely irrelevant to the game. And it leads to like a level of con consistency that I've grown to know in Altec and his this split. Uh, Altec actually, ever since his time with Winter Fox, uh, a couple splits ago, I actually really admired him as an AD carry, and I thought he has. I think he. I still think he has a lot of potential. I don't think he's fully grown yet. Still, I do think though that right now his biggest trouble in energy is his inconsistency, where it feels like he's either super irrelevant or he is just super like going crazy like he just explodes in the middle of the game it's weird moon is not doing well either though uh and i feel like this is probably going to be the key point that team liquid's going to exploit moon has had a very lackluster split and is probably like in the bottom half of junglers in na at the moment however he is mechanically good like that's something that i 
need to stress like moon is a good player it just seems like he hasn't played well with energy and he's just been there like he hasn't really had an impact and i keep saying impact and impact in this and it's weird but he's he's good but he's not doing good and that may be taken advantage by an aggressive jungler like dardoch uh, i feel like he has really poor matchups against junglers like dardoch like rush uh and even rain over rain over while he can be aggressive he's super calculated and i feel like moon kind of plays into rain over's hand in that situation uh but yeah i just i feel like moon is exploitable at the moment for energy so they're definitely gonna have to work on their comms and the final thing which i think is actually the nail in the coffin for energy if there's something not taken care of energy have one of the worst early games in lcs their early game is so weird because impact doesn't do anything all tech just disappears like you forget he exists Quan Quan tries to do something it feels like but he he's down there in bot lane he they're just doing their thing and gbm like even though he's really good he has not been playing against the top teams as well in the early like his laning phase has been slightly off so with that being said their early game is really bad and they tend to get beaten in the early game when they lose uh this kind of goes back to their good mid to late calls because a lot of their wins feel like they just play really well in the good uh the mid to late game transition and they're able to catch team off of mistakes and team liquid is definitely a team that they can do that too because their like game transition seems to be a little off and seems to be a little sloppy so they could do that um however against a team like team liquid if team liquid's able to play to their strength of getting just ahead and just snowballing through the series it'll be a tough one but with that being said it leaves us to one thing who's going to win i'm actually going to go ahead and call for team liquid to be able to win this matchup team liquid versus energy is actually a matchup i think favors team liquid in a three to one scenario i think the three to one the one match that energy will win will be due to gbm pulling out a good draft uh well energy pulling off a good draft that has gbm actually pulling out a pocket blick and being able to cheese out team liquid that being said i think team liquid will walk away with the win and i feel like energy is going to unfortunately not be able to win so 3-1 in favor of team liquid if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to smash that like button and be sure to subscribe let me know if you enjoyed this kind of content and i'll continue doing league of legends style content now without further ado guys i am out of here this has been travesty thanks for watching and peace